Hello, hello. Welcome to Roll Review. Today we're going to be reviewing Phoenix 200 by Harmon. Um, so, quick little overview on what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go through the roll as, as shot. And these images are as they were scanned um, and the most we'll do as far as editing in this will be to rotate it. Um, maybe, you know, we'll zoom in, stuff like that, really look at some details. Um, but as far as editing, uh, we'll, we'll just be rotating. So uh, originally I was going to shoot this um, in my Roly 35S. But I decided um, I wanted a little more control on the depth of field and wanted to visualize what would be in focus. So I switched um, from that to my Nikormat uh, FTN. Uh, we put a 50, the nifty 50 on that uh, F2, and uh, went to town. So without further ado, uh, the critiquing process is going to be a bit different than my last one. Uh, just simply because I feel it could be improved and uh, to really like delve into what the images are focused on. I think my last videos um, were great for beginning, um, just looking at your photos, just getting a feel for it. But at this point in my uh, photography journey, I would like to be a lot more... Um, what's the word uh intentional about what i'm what i'm making photographs with and of uh, and also would like to uh, improve in any way that i can so the best way to do that is to be uh, honest and truly honest about what we are seeing here so uh, i did shoot this at 400 asa or iso and uh, without further ado let's go all right, Phoenix 200, 35 mil, amazing stuff, really fun. So first impression of first of the roll um, is there's not enough information personally. Uh, so I don't think I can really gauge what I even took a picture of, to be honest. I'm not sure. So first of the roll fun little snippet into uh, what might be. Then we move on to the second. Uh, double exposure, as I said, we I uh, originally was sh putting it through the Roly, but I uh, decided I wanted to go with something else. The FT, uh, Nikor Mat FTN. So this is uh, a double exposure that was not planned. Um, <laughs> but has its own characteristics. Uh, simply because, so first impressions, it's initial impressions, whichever you prefer. Um, I mean, I think overall it's, it's held color. Not the greatest. Shooting this, when I took the picture at the car show, um, it was super bright, super, it was, broad daylight with sparkling water, you know? And, uh, yeah, so I believe I, if I remember correctly, I shot this, I metered this for uh, F22 at 500th of a second. Uh, and then this one, the wind of my window, I'm not entirely sure what I shot this at or metered for. Let me see here. Can I? Nope. Hmm. Well. Yeah. So what's in focus? Um. Well, since this is the second uh, frame, it's hard to tell with these two contrasting uh, aspects. But maybe if we were to crop it somewhere around here, or, let's see here, can I rotate it this way? Nope, that's okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, there's not really any focus in this. Um, as far as the exposure, the exposure, uh, even in this one, and you know, the original, the initial uh, photo, it's quite, it looks underexposed, is what it looks. Uh, and the white balance is not correct as it is underexposed, and this film stock does have a much more contrasty and uh, orangish green, maybe even magenta, I would dare I say, um, tone to it. But, I mean, there's not really any halations in this, so I guess it's all right. Depth of field, I mean, in the initial photograph, the depth of field is uh, kind of shallow. It's pretty shallow, uh, considering this was at f22. Uh, contrast, very, very contrasty. Um, I should have put more light into it, for sure. But lesson learned. There is not enough light to um, evenly distribute across this image. The colors are not accurate as it is underexposed. Um, was that intentional? Absolutely not. I was thinking it super bright. F22 is the way to go at the 500th of a second. But that was not the case. In this, uh, I must have metered for probably... I usually like to start around 8 uh, just because uh, cameras technically are sharper past 8. Um, maybe 8. 500th, the slowest 250, uh, 250th of a second. Uh, I think this image might be a lot more powerful if, if it was in black and white, uh, but not not by much, just because uh, there is a lot going on and it's not, there's no clear area to look at besides this area right here. And so really, I mean, we could Potential, potentially, let's see, can I do that, yeah, there we go, Woo! zoomed in for days, yeah, so like if we were to crop right here, or something of that nature, it, it kind of improves the photo, but it is severely underexposed in this aspect, and this is <laughs> uh, severely overexposed, so, um, does it hold attention? Not really, there's, there's not, besides distractibility, perhaps. Um, the composition is off because it is a double exposure and it was not an intentional one. Cropping may Im improve this, but I, I don't really think so. So, um, no emotion, there's not really a story besides the car show back here, but uh, that's about it. Moving on. All right, here's another double exposure. This one kind of works a little bit more. I mean, we've got, uh, I was, so it appears it was, ah, oh, yes. Uh, I took a photo of my, my cat and uh, decided, no, I don't want to shoot. Because <laughs> I was already taking a whole bunch of photos of my, my precious kitty. But uh, that wasn't the way I wanted to go. So. Popped it in at the car show. Got some some uh, people action here. Feed the ducks. And um, yeah, fun, fun, fun. Let's see. Initial impressions. It's it's interesting. This this is the cat tree I have um, blending into the sky. You can see whiskers here, and another piece of the cat tree, and then this bright light. I am imagining is the window here, which is really interesting how this kind of frames itself, which was not intentional. <laughs> Again, this was not intentional at all. Um, most of my double exposures tend not to be intentional. I kind of like it that way though. But I do plan, so regardless, back to the point. What's in focus? I mean. The focus is the interaction with the ducks 
the birds, this person, and these people, this family here, um, gazing, the car show, the environment. Um, I think this contrast of dark and light right here kind of frames it pretty all right. Uh, I still would crop it right here though. Uh, it just makes more sense as that is most of the image. Now the depth of field, great. I mean, we can, we can see pretty far. Um, I mean, if this was enhanced and edited a little bit more uh, and the highlights brought up, not highlights, excuse me, the overall exposure, it is underexposed, but overall, I mean, you can tell what's going on as opposed to the previous image. Uh, super contrasty, I mean, that is to be expected with this film stock. Um, the lighting is a little underexposed, but I mean, you can tell what the subjects are for the most part. Um, let's see here. The colors, um, they're not as, they're not accurate to life, but they are, uh, <laughs> what's the word? I don't want to say dreamy, but like it, it, it has this tone, this vibe, I guess you can say, of, uh, of a memory, right? And I think that's that's really what Harmon was really going for when they when they uh, created this film stock here. So um, I think it could be improved with making it black and white. But uh, personally, I'm a simple guy. You know, uh, if you shoot it in color, you leave it in color. Uh, otherwise, you know, shoot black and white. That's all I gotta say. Uh, the perspective, I think. The perspective could have been a bit closer. I mean, this image was taken with uh, the Rolly, so uh, that's a 40 mil. I mean, I'm not too far away, but I mean, I could have gotten a little bit closer to really uh, accentuate what I was focusing on and um, cut out the other distractions, as well as maybe not have double exposed it. Um, as far as the composition, I think it's it's fine. It's like rule of thirds kind of vibe. Uh, should have been more intentional, could have been more intentional. Uh, so, I mean, there's all this negative space, even if it wasn't a double exposure. There's a lot of negative space between the subject and the overall image. So, um, distractions, the double exposure is the distraction, in my opinion. Uh, does it hold and grab attention? Not really, because of all this negative space. I mean, your eyes kind of, I, for me, it feels like my eyes do want to rest in this area. So, I mean, I might as well just really zoom in and like crop this area. Because all the negative space is, is not adding to the image, unfortunately, because of the double exposure um, to give a sense of uh, grandness, perhaps. But yeah, overall, I mean, it, it, the emotion, I guess you can be, you know, humans being humans here not really a story besides feeding the ducks a memory but it's so subjective that uh it's not really a story unless you were there so moving on uh this is my partner it is a portrait uh double exposed <laughs> with our kitty there uh, yes i will be zooming in on that kitty I think this film stock looks really nice on skin though. Um, even though this image is slightly under underexposed than I'd like it to be. Um, I mean, the blinds of the window kind of have this interesting effect. And I mean, overall, I mean, it's a, it's an okay photo. There's, there's nothing that really grabs my attention besides uh, her face. Um, not really evoking any emotion, uh, especially since this <laughs> highlighted uh, part of the window from the double exposure um, kind of takes away from that. But I mean, the the double exposure of the kitty here is kind of cool, um, but that is so subjective because that is my cat. So I mean, of course I'm gonna enjoy it. Um, exposure is slightly underexposed, could have been more exposed, I could have used more light, something. 
uh, therefore the white balance is a bit off but I think it's kind of staying true to what this uh, film stock uh, does and uh, provides. Um, it's not as contrasty as the previous images that we've seen, but um, it definitely is keeping true to the to what Harmon uh, described this film as. Uh, let's see. I think it would be a little bit stronger if it was in black and white, but. Uh, I shot it in color and I wanted to see it in color so there's that uh, I might crop it a bit like up here just because this feels like it's its own image by itself so perhaps maybe like right there I'd crop it right there maybe zoom out a bit something like that and that way it definitely helps focus the image a bit more. Um, this is obviously very distracting um, and takes away from the photo because it is a double exposure. But overall, I mean, I think it's it's an okay photo. Not the greatest though. Can be improved. <laughs> be intentional when you load your cameras. I unfortunately um, am working through the indecisiveness. Because you know, especially film photography is a lot about experimenting so um, overall I mean it's an alright photo moving on okay so this is um, the hallway of my building uh, <laughs> I knew this film stock was gonna have pretty strong halation and uh, I think this was a perfect time to test that out you can really see right there on the highlights there and that we haven't seen in the previous ones which I think is kind of cool it definitely brings an eerie vibe to this this hall is not as dark as it appears in this photo so this is underexposed um, perhaps I should have pushed the film stock when developed that might have uh, might have might have aided it a bit, but I shot it at 400 and developed it as normal. So, is what it is. But, um, focus. The focus is the hall itself. This, this natural framing that's kind of going on here. Um, I mean, I would, I, th I would crop in a bit here, because, well, work with me here, and straighten the photo. <laughs> Uh, it was a quick snapshot. I really don't. I don't want to catch anybody coming out of their, you know, their home, and uh, you know, it's just it's a private area, so I don't. I it was just a quick snap, just to check, just to see the characteristics in indoors. Um, so I mean, there's not really much to talk about this besides the halation, the color, um, staying true to. Staying true to the film stock, but uh, as far as like correct colors that are actual that are uh, accurate to life, it is not. It is uh, it is its own version, and I like that. I like it a lot. I mean, this definitely has an entirely different feel. And sometimes I kind of do feel like this hall feels like this. So, I mean, it does have a story. The exit sign at the end could be meaningful in some way if this was framed a little bit more intentionally. Um, I think black and white might improve the quality of the overall image. I am a little biased when I when I say put it in black and white or should have just you know took a picture in black and white but um, in this case it does what it needs to do and I ain't mad at it. So yeah uh, there's not really a story besides, you know, like you could say, I mean, you could make a story, but um, I think you would also have to say you have an overactive imagination. Not overactive, no such thing. Just a very active one. So, yeah, I mean, moving on. <sighs> I'm actually quite happy with this photo. Um, initial impressions, I mean, I love threes. Three is my favorite number. Um, finding things in threes really, really is the bee's knees for me. 
Um, so the focus, initial impressions, the focus. Um, I obviously think it's these three birds here. I mean, it even looks like it could be a multiple exposure, but it's not. Uh, the tops of the building across from me and, uh, excuse me. I just, it's really, this is a really nice continuation right here um, f that fills or takes up space in this negative space. Um, and then you have this. Uh, there's not really a great amount of depth of field here. I mean, we know that the white balance isn't going to be correct. It is, it does feel slightly underexposed, but that could be that could be from exposing for the sky and not necessarily uh, the foreground here and it's not it it's hard to tell what is the foreground what is the background uh, this is a very flat image um, so uh, hold and grab attention yeah I mean this is nice to look at, but only for so long, and it doesn't really evoke any emotion or, you know, some kind of sentimental value. Uh, the story, I mean, you could make a story about what's going on with these three birds, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think overall, I mean, there's not really any story to go off of here. Um, is there any distractions? I mean, we don't have the double exposure that we have in the past images, uh, but so, I mean, overall, I think this is a pleasing blue to this warm oranges down here, but, I mean, it's a flat image. It's pretty flat. There's no depth of field. There's not really anything that allows your eyes to really travel through this besides the birds here. So uh, that could have been improved, but overall, I mean, I'm... I'm pretty all right with this photo. Moving on. All right, this is on the road. Um, uh, my partner and I, we were we are on the road to the Renaissance Fair, and um, this is in Arizona. So uh, I've got a thing for light posts, and I'm sure many other film photographers know what I'm talking about. Um, I mean, it provides a divider in a way, a, a resting point for your eyes to then wander around the image. Um, I just really love rocks. I love mountainscapes. I like hills, mountains, plateaus, all that good stuff. Rocks are amazing. So, um, and the traffic was a bit bit slow here so I decided to snap a couple photos um, on the way um, I mean so initial impressions I mean it's a very clean photo um, you can kind of see my vehicle right here a bit uh, what's in focus I mean everything's in focus I believe I shot this at I want to say f16 but it could be that I was shooting at f eight at a thousandth of a second uh, to compensate for uh, the wider aperture than f16 but if I shot it at f16 then I was probably shooting at 250th of 250th of a second or one 500th of a second uh, overall I mean it's a decent image I think it really has a nice gradient of the colors here uh, it's dreamy and what i mean by that is so can i zoom in please thank you and what i mean by that is these colors are not accurate to life right there this is not what this area looks like um maybe if it was in a movie this is this feels like uh special color grading going on for sure it feels like a memory this film stock feels like a memory like when you think at least for me, on hot summer days, you know, and this is not summer, this is in February. Um, you look back and, you know, you think about stuff and it kind of has this hazy feel. And I and I believe, if I remember correctly, that is kind of what Harmon was going for when they uh, developed and created this film stock. 
So, I mean, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. It's all right. It works for me. Not for everything, but so far, this image, I like it. Um, white balance, it's not correct. I don't, I think this overall is well exposed. Perhaps it could have been slightly overexposed to compensate for some of the shadows. But I mean, overall, I think, I mean, we're not really losing much shadow detail right here, or we do lose it a bit in the, in the you know, this, this landscape, but I mean, it gives a certain characteristic that I appreciate. Um, depth. It feels like there's more depth to the image than the previous ones have had. And I appreciate that. So, uh, does it hold and grab attention? No, there's not really anything out of the ordinary that you know, grabs or hooks somebody to continue looking at this image. Therefore, there's not really any emotion that could be evoked from it, unless you know the place, you know, unless it's, it's a subjective question, right? What kind of emotion is evoked from this? Um, if you like rocks as much as I do, you might be like, yeehaw, this is a great image. But, I mean, there's not really even a story that's being told here. It's just a photo. Um, <laughs> it's just a photo. It's just essentially a snapshot, it feels like. So, but, I mean... Overall, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a decent photo. Nothing crazy, decent. Moving on. Okay, so this is an example of it being a little bit overexposed. So if I'm, I'm gonna go back real quick here. So this one is properly exposed. I'm gonna use this as a baseline for be, it being proper exposed until we uh, look at the other ones. But let's see here. Yeah, so um, we can see that the highlights are not blown out here. There's not really much halation either. So this must have been at f16, especially with this being in focus so well. So and then we move on to this one. Um, <laughs> I mean, first impressions, it's not a great photo. It's it's a snapshot. It's from it, it's like from the hip, which is what I did from my vehicle. Um, I was trying to make sure I wasn't getting the vehicle in the image too, so uh, that did affect how I was framing. I do like to try and line up lamp posts, light posts, um, and fences, uh, and that just did not work out here. And that's all right. We live and we learn. Is the exposure correct? Uh, it is overexposed. It is definitely overexposed here. And I simply think that's because of how the wall kind of is starting to blend in. I mean, like, we can't even really see what the rocks look like back here. Um, but they're kind of blending in with the sky, and the sky is losing its blue somehow. Um, and I wonder if that is because it is slight, it is overexposed a bit. Um, I mean, the shadow detail, I mean, overall seems, I mean, <laughs> we did lose shadow detail, except maybe in the mountain area ranges. Um, darks are dark, lights are light, and boy, it is overexposed right in this area. That wall is very bright. So, I mean... <laughs> Nothing really to hold, you can grab my attention. Nothing really to evoke any emotion. Um, and there's not there's not a story. I mean, there's not a story. <laughs> We're not pulling anybody's whatever. <laughs> there's no story here. Um, the distractions is, it's not framed properly. It could have, the framing could have been more intentional. But, I mean, I'm just gonna say, you know, it's a little bit more, more difficult to frame properly when you're in a vehicle. Yes. So, moving on. All right, and we are continuing along. Uh, I was trying to 
So this is with, just to reiterate, this is with the Nifty 50 Nikkor Mat FTN uh, F2. I'm pretty sure I was shooting this image. I mean, it must have been F16. F16, maybe 250th of a second. Um, we see more shadow detail up in the rocks here. Uh, but we... Hmm... Depth of field is a bit off. It feels like this is a mirage almost. And look at the shadow on the light post. It's pretty interesting actually. I kinda like it. It's that's really cool actually. <laughs> for unrelated reasons to this uh <laughs> image, just from as a uh you know, from light and shadow perspective. Little birdie. It's very, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely what the, the film stock emulated here with the lights and shadows. Excuse me. Um, we can see the halation more on the highlights here on the reflective materials. Um, but not so much on the houses, which is interesting. So maybe, you know, those bright, bright highlights is only where the halation really resides. So I mean, I mean, overall, this image, there's, there's, this, there's nothing really that pops out. I mean, this is distracting. Um, the framing is distracting. Uh, it, it could have been framed more intentionally. So uh, there's not really a story. It's not really any emotion, and it doesn't necessarily grab my attention. Uh, so I mean, why stay and look, right? So yeah, I mean, moving on. Ah, yes. More empty space, just negative space. I really, I like utilizing negative space, but I, th looking through these, I, I just need to be much more intentional about what I'm trying to focus on. And I, I think cropping maybe something like this like getting this for road out the way might improve but the road kind of adds to it it gives a sense of where the depth starts if we were to crop in that takes it away but i mean i think this is a much better image just just by you know cropping it like this <sighs> you live and you learn <laughs> um I'm gonna guess this was still f16 at 250th of a second uh, just because there is much more light here um, and we do get that depth of field all the way back there the sanguaro cactuses are lovely uh, the green you really don't see green on this film stock that's what I'm noticing so far they're, they're more of orange browns Hmm. Interesting. Lovely. But yeah, I pro I I would definitely crop this image like right right around here or something. Let me zoom out a bit. Yeah. Crop this image and I think this looks a lot better already. But so basically that's just the rule of thirds, right? I mean, we've got a uh, main subject, the rocks and negative space. So your eyes naturally would rest right in this area, right? So, but at this this frame, it doesn't really do that for you. So, yeah, I mean, overall, it's all right. Not the greatest, can be improved. Proper exposure is great. Uh, the white balance isn't correct, but that is simply because uh, that is the characteristic of this film stock. Depth of field, great, I mean, we get the mirage kind of sense of the mountain range rocks in the back and that's great so moving on ah so now we have a sense of where we are right we've got we're filling up that negative space here and we're you know we've got the rule of thirds this light post is not where I'd like it to be. <clears throat> Simply for its distractibility, it really just sticks out. 
and figuratively and literally. Um, perhaps, you know, cropping the image a bit like, nope, maybe something like that gives a little bit more of a story but as as it stands it doesn't really have a story doesn't necessarily have any kind of proper composition and uh, that's where it kind of falls off and that's all right uh, we live and we learn gosh so we know the colors aren't going to be accurate. We know the white balance isn't going to be accurate simply because that is the characteristics of this film stock. And we love it. We love it. I mean, the blues are blue and these orange, these golds, I guess you can even say <laughs> gold field. I mean, you know, the warm, col warmer colors definitely, I feel, get warmer. Uh, even the blue feels warm. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe in black and white, this might be a little bit of a stronger composition, but as it stands, uh, it's... This light post, I think, really kind of takes away from a lot of the image. If this light post was removed or framed differently, maybe a different story, but as it stands, uh, it's not a strong image. Moving on. All right, this is in the parking lot. Everybody's getting situated. Everyone's finally, you know, arriving to uh, the festival, the Renaissance Festival. And uh, just the grand, just the sheer space they needed for all these people, uh, amazing. So, I mean, this is just a quick snapshot for myself personally. Uh, to remember so I mean there's nothing really besides the vastness of all this and uh, the amount of cars I mean, we can zoom in here now we've got got the guy directing people and they've got markers I mean it, it, overall I think it's it's all right it's not great I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and lie to y'all I'll tell you a joke, but I won't lie to you that this is a good image because, I mean, it's it's a snapshot. It's I could have honestly taken this on my phone, to be honest, <laughs> but I didn't. I wanted to see what it would look like on film, specifically Phoenix. So, I mean, overall, I think it's properly exposed. Um, you can see details. You've got your negative space. But that's really it. I mean, technically, we could say that the whole image is negative space. Uh, and there's not really a clear depth of field. Like, there's no foreground uh, to separate this middle and background. Uh, so it's a very flat image. Uh, could be improved with more intentional framing once again. Moving on. All right. So here's a bit more intentional framing. Um, a bit more depth, you know, adding to the depth of field. This feels like a less flat photo than the previous one. Uh, we've got, you know, we've got some subjects here. Kind of, I personally don't use the rule of thirds. I like the golden ratio, which is more, um, you have like this two by three rectangle rhombus whatever you want to call it, in the center. And then it's, it's still separated in the rule of thirds, but the way the weight is distributed throughout the image is a bit more closer to uh, the center than the um, regular rule of thirds. Um, and I think this image is, so far, is stronger than the previous images that we've seen. Uh, and that's simply because, one, we have a subject, we have multiple subjects, and your eyes can kind of flow through this image. Um, could be improved on the depth of field. It's not terribly flat, but it's, it's still a flat image. We definitely need more on this foreground here. Uh, the middle ground is doing all right, 
but the background it kind of blends in with the background uh, and that's that could be improved and then we have all this negative space right so perhaps like if if we were to zoom in or crop it something like that I feel like this is a already a much stronger image um, but lines were growing and I did not want to be in a line longer than I had to right so overall I mean there's a bit of a story I mean but it's it's kind of far-fetched right <laughs> I'm not gonna uh, we're grasping it for 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 what is it straws strings we're grasping for nothing right here so there's not really a story here and it doesn't really evoke any emotion unless you were there right so it's subjective does it hold and grab attention? Uh, better than the previous ones, I'll say that. It's better than the previous ones. But still, it's not anything dramatic. There's nothing that's like, wow, look at this. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's an alright photo. Subpar, nothing crazy. Might be, no, I think it's good in color. I don't think this image would be stronger in black and white. Um, even though my brain is saying it would, I don't think it would, uh, simply because of the factors that we discussed. So, moving on. Awesome. So, we're on our way to the line. I love... <laughs> I love catching like moments of intimacy, right? And intimacy is just human connection, is what I mean by that. And so, um, this is at 50, right? It is, the sky is clearly blown out, so that is not properly exposed at all. And that's fine, um, because that's not the subject. The subject is these, this couple right here, which is absolutely lovely, and their family. Um, I mean, there's a lot to look at in this image. We're, we're getting into the area of... Now there's a lot of distractions. Have to be a lot more con uh, intentional about what we want to show the viewer, right? What we want to show in general. What is the story we want? We're trying to tell here. Clearly, this is the su the, the the subject, right? The, this this couple, but um, it doesn't scream. Look at me. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't hold the attention. It grabs the attention, but it doesn't hold it there, you know? Like, this guy looks way more interesting, and that's simply because most people don't see a guy with a quiver, excuse me, an elvish decor, decorum? Attire, excuse me. So, yeah, I mean, I think overall, I mean, there is more foreground, middle ground, and background. The sky is severely overexposed, um, but that's okay. Um, I'm just glad it wasn't like super all red halation like Cinestill would do if it was shot in the, these conditions. But that's all right. I mean, I think overall, I mean, I would, I would probably crop this vertically so it is focused solely on them um, and that way you would get that middle foreground hmm maybe I'd crop it something a little like that hmm. yeah I mean overall it's an okay image I think I should have done it in portrait rather than horizontal and uh, that would have strengthened the image a bit more um, I think it I do think this image would be a bit better in black and white but uh, the colors are something to see so why deny that right the story it's just people being people and I love it that's that's what I love so Overall, I mean, it's an all right image, but uh, could be improved with more uh, intentional framing. Let me write that down, that is my theme. Intentional framing, be more intentional about my framing. All right, moving on. 
Okay. So we're going through the lines. I'm just, I'm so excited and I was not overstimulated. It takes a lot for me to get overstimulated. But um, in this particular uh, photograph, I mean, the impression is that I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> My impression is I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know what the focus is. I don't know, you know, where I should be looking. The negative space that I'm utilizing here is not helping the image. So I would pro I would probably crop it, something like that. Or I should have gotten closer um, to properly uh, frame this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, see, I should have shot the previous photo in vertical, like this one, uh, and this one should have been in horizontal. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. But there, I mean, with looking at the image a bit closer, I mean, there is, there's, there's things for our eyes, like this person pointing and then this person also looking, I mean, it gives the viewer a way of looking, but like at, as it stands at this point, it's very difficult. And if I had not zoomed in, I would have noticed this person looking, it feels like they're looking directly at me. So, I mean, that right there could be a story, um, but it's a far-fetched one. Or we could like move it in over this way, right? Let me see. Move it in like that. And have this kind of story where we don't know where this person's going, but they're pointing that way, and then you have this person. Something like that. That that feels like a better composition than what I have here. Uh and that's on me. Lesson learned. Be more intentional with framing. Uh, the perspective is a little skewed. Uh, this is not, you know, <laughs> this is not aligned uh, properly to any, you know, axis, horizontal or vertical. Not even diagonal. It's, it's just kind of skewed off a bit and that goes back to intentional framing so overall I mean I would definitely crop this image uh, to increase the composition and what the story I'm trying to or would want to display so something like that yeah anyways we're going to take a break from there, and uh, we'll pick up with the next one. So uh, if you like it, if you found this useful, uh, go ahead and drop me a like. Appreciate it. If you want to see more, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll leave the rubric again in the description below. And uh, I do not have any monetization on this channel yet. So if you'd like to help support in what I do and see more uh check out my prints and uh in the description below as well thank you for watching and i'll see y'all soon peace